Hello there. I've had this camera for about five months now, and there are a lot of things that I haven't done with it. Number one, I have yet to travel with it. I haven't really taken any portraits on it. And lastly, I have yet to take any black and white pictures on it. I went on the Rico Recipes app to find a black and white recipe that I liked. Out of the nine black and white recipes available, I went with the classic black and white negative. I set my settings as provided, and then figured I could change as I went along. I ended up not making any changes because I just truly love this recipe. Just simply thinking about the last time I took black and white pictures, I thought I wanted to do high contrast and high shadow photos. So very black, very white. And with that in my head, I knew I wanted to get a lot of sunlight. I wanted to take pictures when it's sunny out. I wanted a lot of light. I photographed this place twice on this channel already, but I haven't done any black and white pictures there. Because I had good results every time I went to this place, I wanted to revisit and see if I can get good black and white pictures. Because of the way this recipe is set up, the blacks are very dark and the whites are very bright. And that combination creates extremely dramatic images. This dog, for example, in color or taken with my phone, it would have been kind of a boring picture, even the empty plate on my fork on the left. But because of the dramatic and drastic settings, even something so simple looks good. Because this space is kind of limited and I have photographed a number of times, I wanted to look for something a little different. And that something different was a detail to what people are doing. As I mentioned in my earlier videos, I prefer not to be at touristy places, especially if the places have been heavily photographed. I was going to be in the area, and I thought I would take advantage of that and take some pictures. The Hollywood sign, this park, done to death. Maybe it's the mindset that I had, but approaching the park, I wonder what I would have to do to make this overdone cliche scenery look a little more interesting. I didn't have much time there, so I couldn't get a lot of pictures, but this is something I'll like to think about and maybe come back here in the future, or just think about it when I photograph more tourist attractions. Because I already played with morning light, I wanted to take advantage of the evening light as well. I took this picture during a run the other day, and I really liked how the sun created that beautiful block of light on the wall. Knowing that, I decided to go back to the same area around the same time. This was the first picture I took that night, and I knew I could go a little darker to make my subject appear a little more clearly. Out of the three pictures I took at this spot, this has to be my favorite. When you look at the shadow, it's right in the light. And although you cannot see the person very clearly, if I were to cover the subject and only show you the shadows, you would still know what's happening. Now, two things here. I'm showing you this picture because it's similar to the one that I took with my phone. And number two, this guy just saying hi.
We all know when I see pictures like this, I have to tilt it a little bit so the sidewalk is leveled, horizontal, and the background is slanted. I can't really tell why, but the slanted picture just makes it a little more busy. It's not as organized, it's busy, and dare I say, the picture feels a little dirty. It feels a little too crowded for some reason. But when you align everything, make it straight, it's a little easier on the eyes. I can't really figure out why. If you know the answer, let me know. This very weekend, Anime Expo was happening and there are a lot of people in general. So with the idea of playing with lights and shadows, I wanted to have people in my pictures and also play with motions like I did in my last video at Venice Beach. If I just look at the street, there's nothing special about it. Buildings, trees, lights, what else? But with these people hurrying to cross the street after getting off their expo shuttle, the guy in the very back or on the right, you can see that he was in a hurry. With his back full of goodies and his costume, this guy was running to cross the street. And without these people crossing the street, this picture would have been very boring. Actually, I think I have the normal, regular Schmegler picture. Let me see if I can pull it up for a comparison. I have this picture with the car, but if I crop in, you get an idea of how plain this picture would have been. This picture, I took it as soon as I crossed the street and turned around. This probably is my favorite photo from the entire night. The only downside here is that the guy on the bicycle is not in focus. So I wanted to do the same, but maybe a little different. Have the guy be still, but everything else around him in motion. I'm very happy with this one. This was a little experiment I wanted to do. I saw this patrol car with orange lights on and the lights were being reflected off the shutters. I wanted to do something with it. Photograph as someone walking in front of it, biking in front of it, just do something with it. But as I got closer to the patrol car, I noticed that because of the way the car is parked, the lights were directly behind it. And because of that, I had to be a little off to the side in order to capture the light. It didn't really go the way I wanted to. Maybe this is something that would have been better in color. Or when it's pitch blackouts, when everything is dark and the reflective lights are the only ones that are visible in the darkness. 